I want to show you some really crazy things that are happening in the humanoid robot space. This video right here is from this company called 1X, and they're showing an example of, you know, a, a prototype humanoid that can do basic household tasks, converse, it has, you know, vision model, language model, all these things allow it to, you know, see and interact with this environment. I think what the big advancements in this really are is the understanding and logic models of what to do with hands, uh, decisions that should be made. This is, this is really going to be a game changer because like right now, this is in sort of a prototype phase, but there's going to be these like these things are going to come to market in a way that I don't think anybody is like truly ready for. So this is this is a pretty crazy jump, I think. Another example of this was this post on a startup that has humanoid robots doing manufacturing tasks on a line. So what this company is doing is from what I understand shipping humanoid teams that can go out and be trained fairly easily on sets of tasks and you could take each of the bots and you could say, Hey, here's your job. Here's your job. And, uh, you know, here, here's how I need you to work. Another video that's worth seeing a similar type of concept where they have <clears throat> humanoids sorting everything on an assembly line. So they're taking packages, they're moving them and actually viewing them and deciding <clears throat> where they go. This is a really simple task, but I think what this is, like why this is important is that the functionality of these robots, if today they're able to do this, they're gonna be able to scale up to much more complex tasks very quickly in the months and years to come. This is also leading to this video from uh, this guy, Corey Lynch, which has this company called Figure, and we just saw a video of those bots sorting things, but I think the most profound, profound um, video of the capabilities is, is exhibited here. So these robots are given a stack of groceries and they're told to sort them and put them away. And what's just really crazy here is being able to see them actually work together to accomplish this task. And I think some of the profound things they've got going on here in the decision-making process, like if you notice, the movements are very fluid and it's smoothly moving around and opening drawers and doors and then it's making choices about those spaces along with the items that it has and so i think what it has there this little bag of something that needs to be refrigerated it passes it to the robot it's working with hands it over and those hands on those two separate units work together and it says, okay, hey, thank you. Let me take this. And then I'm going to do something with it. Also, there's an apple. And here in a second, you'll see that it puts the apple in the fruit bowl. And it's got like a pack of crackers. And it's saying, okay, cool. Those probably need to go. Those are like a snack. So we'll take those and we'll put them in the drawer where things like that are, where dry goods need to be stored. The ketchup bottle is a really interesting part of this video because it takes the ketchup bottle and puts it right up by the mustard, right? It puts it right in the door in, and so not only does it put it in the refrigerator, but it, can, it contextualizes the entire space of the refrigerator and then uses that appropriately. Okay, so there's the fruit going in the fruit bowl. And it even organized the fruit bowl after that. And you see them both complete the task by putting things away. So that is by far, this is like the craziest level that I think we might have seen humanoid robots go to. And this is where like iRobot is like something that we could see occurring. Like we could see a reality just like iRobot where you've got a robot in the house helping, you know, an old person with all their daily tasks, cooking, cleaning, putting all the stuff away for them, you know, even maybe going to the store and getting them some groceries or something. Another significant thing, this robotics company made a robot that can do a front flip. Now that 
is significant for a number of reasons, right? Like the the versatility of physical movement, like when you're actually getting into like physical bots, right? This is where you get into things like RoboCop. You know, you've got a, a cop that can, you know, a robotic police officer that can chase you and do flips and, you know, jump over things and, you know, regain its balance, right? So that's like some of the things that we've seen in sci-fi movies are absolutely coming back around to be um, more more likely than not to be something that we're going to see within just the next couple of years in terms of it going to market because they, they do have to make these cheap enough to be bought by people. Now, this video is really cool because it shows a robot doing uh, some tasks with heavier items. So it's picking up a bag of rice and actually sorting and using it. Now, this is a little bit different than a humanoid bot. Um, this actually kind of looks like some sort of medical device if you've ever been in and you've seen something that was like a, uh, I don't know, like to me, this just reminds me of like kind of like a mix between like an, not like an ultrasound machine, but like that and, you know, I don't know, it just looks kind of medical. Does that make, you know, if that makes sense, right? But these are another type of bot, you know, that could be really useful for doing things like, you know, in theory, you could have probably like 10 of these and they could be running an entire kitchen, right? So like, it's a very, very reasonable assessment that you could have maybe 10 of these running a high school cafeteria or something in not that long. Another interesting video in robotics, somebody figured out how to get a robot bike that not only can control the bike, but it can do tricks and jumps with it, can go hop up on this table and then hop down without losing its balance. So like the future of this could be, you know, delivery vehicles, right? This thing goes around an urban setting. It has a package on its back and it can take stuff to you. Um, we've seen things like this come out of Boston Dynamics and videos that have gone viral in the past. Uh, these little kind of like dog robots. But I think that this is probably pretty groundbreaking because it has wheels, right? And, uh, you know, additionally too, right? It seems to be like controlling a bike that's already standard. So, how, you know, how long until you have something it's a robot that you can put on any bike. You don't even need a special bike. You could just have a standard um, vehicle that is just, you know, a human could ride one day and then a robot the next. And that's something that is, is really game changing about this. Now this shows some of the prices for some of these robots. Now you'll see they're not that cheap yet. And a lot of these are made in China. Some of these, you know, we're looking at 120,000 all the way down to 20,000. I think that what we're seeing from uh, like the higher quality robots, like the ones that you saw that were sorting the groceries. I think that right now, those are probably way up the price scale. However, you know, these are going to get down to the price of a Toyota Camry and maybe even cheaper. They might get down to like 10,000. And then this leads to the, you know, if, you, if the, the robots cost that much, then how many robots can you put to work doing what types of things? You know, so some things that come to mind for me is you could have maybe... 10 of these. So let's say it's $100,000 if we got them cheap enough. And he had a farm, right? Like, let's just say a chicken farm. These robots could go around all day and feed chickens and gather eggs and, you know, change the water out and do all sorts of tasks and come back to a barn and then sit there and charge up. And, and you know, that's their work for the day. And you're a chicken farmer and you, you do the, you know, you take care of the amount of chickens that it takes, you know, 10 people you know, to take care of, you have a large, uh, or, you know, a decent sized farm, but all that work is being done by the robot. So that's one thing that is kind of crazy about this. If the price comes down on these and, you know, if you think about it, basically they've got probably about a raspberry Pi type computer in their head. They've got some hydraulics and metals, um, in other parts of their body. And, you know, if they're mass produced and if the technology gets cheap enough and maybe if there's some open source advancements, I feel like it's highly likely that we could get something down to that, you know, price point. I think we're in the super early days of these prices. And so that's just something to consider there.